Hey guys and welcome to my very first Total War Warhammer 3 video. Today we're going to be looking at the new multiplayer game mode called Domination. Now this is replacing the standard pitch battles in the competitive scene. This is the competitive ranked game mode in Total War Warhammer 3 and most likely going to be dominating the tournament scene as well as it is a bucket ton of fun. It is very different though from the standard pitch battle so today I'm going to be doing a small beginner's tutorial for you guys just so you can get your brains wrapped around what this game mode is all about and how to play it before the release of Warhammer 3 so you can get a nice little runoff as soon as you start playing. And as you can see from the opening game, it is very, very different already. We actually start with two different armies rather than just one. The main army is relatively small in comparison to the reinforcing army and this is now an objective based fight. You're not simply trying to slay as many enemies as possible, though that certainly does help and blood for the blood god is what we're all about here on the channel and in Total War Warhammer 3 in general, but it is very focused around free objectives, which we'll have a little look at when we hop into the actual map. But let's first take a tiny bit of time to analyze the main screen here. So the way this is going to work on Ranked is you're going to load into a game, you will select your faction, and you will not know what your opponent is selecting. They will then select their faction, and you meet in the middle, like, hey, okay, I'm uh, in this instance, as you can see on the left, playing the rather lovely Nathan here, who shall be taking the force of Nurgle, and I'm corn down at the bottom. From that point onwards, you can select your army. You can also change the color scheme up in the top left here, which is really useful, just in case you are coming in against someone who is a mirror match. If I come against corn, I can sw switch my colors, so there's not too much confusion. Your main army is relatively small, but it should normally consist of your lord because in general, it's quite expensive to bring some of these units in in the late game and you want to be spamming out as many troops as possible to capture objectives and just dominate the map. So I do recommend normally bringing your lord in your main army, but you no longer have to bring a legendary lord if you don't want to. You don't have to bring a hero. You don't have to bring anything, although that probably won't go too well for you. You can bring a basic unit of corn berserkers, for example, and one of those corn berserkers will be dedicated as your lord. So as you can see, we build a small army at the top. We're going to be starting the battle with with this army the rest can be brought in and as reserves it's a good idea to bring a nice mixture bring some cheap troops bring some fast troops and bring some elite tanky troops and maybe some monsters because every type of uh, unit in the game be it cavalry skirmishers elite infantry it all plays a big part in this game mode when you select your army as well, there's a nice little character option drop down as you can see in our Lord. It will tell you their abilities and spells and you can tick on and off these items. I certainly recommend reading through them. Sometimes you don't need to bring them. For example, here if I'm like, I don't need the Bellower's Fury, I can just click it off and that saves me 150 gold. We have a nice zero gold and zero gold army here, so we're going to stick with that. So without further ado, let's hop in and I can show you guys the glorious map and actually see what this game mode is all about. I'm very excited for domination mode. It is probably the the thing I am most excited for for Warhammer 3, it's going to change up a lot of the multiplayer scene, completely change the way the game is played, and also, luckily for you Torment hosts out there, you need zero rules to play this game. That's right, in Torments, there will be no need for any rules whatsoever. You can, if you want, camp the white line. That is absolutely fine, because it means you're going to lose the game. You want to kite your opponent? Feel free to do that. They will simply claim the objectives. Now, as we load in here, you're going to see quite a lot of icons on the map. I will explain through all of them as they are very key to this game mode in general. But we have the three uh, objectives in the center. On some maps, these are evenly spaced apart. On some maps, you have a home objective, your opponent has a home one, and there's a contested one in the middle. But on some maps, they are evenly spread apart. You can see a lot of these green symbols and red symbols. That is where your reinforcements are going to come in from. And depending on what your reinforcing unit is, does depend how quickly it can actually make it to the front line in time or sometimes they will have to sit back that can depend on vanguard deployment we'll be starting with the majority of our army we're on the crossing of the sea claws at the moment there is currently about eight or nine different maps but that will be switching as the game goes into more development and we get some more of these crazy maps now the first thing you're going to notice about the map is it's very different to how you would normally play a Total War Warhammer 2 multiplayer map because there is an insane amount of terrain dotted all over the map. Gone are the days of these massive flat open plains. Now there is going to be uh, lots of terrain dotted around the map. There's trees, there's buildings, there's choke points. There's absolutely all these different tactical areas that you can try to exploit and force your opponent into bad situations. There are some maps which are a bit more open, but the majority of them are huge. If we have a little overlook, this map is gigantic and that can be quite 
quite problematic for some of the slower factions, but there are certainly tactics they can use to uh, kind of try and uh, bounce back from that and make themselves a real winner and the good thing i found so far is all the factions coming into the game seem to be pretty damn good and uh, there's no f single faction which seems to be particularly weak or particularly strong so here we have our glorious army we can do some close-ups and this is our first main army we can deploy it in our deployment zone just like you would on a pitch battle he's uh, looking particularly eager there our exalted bloodthirster and everything so far seems pretty simple but as you can see objective number one objective number two and objective number three dotted all the way along the battlefield there's a little lock sign on them with three minutes being marked down and that is because for the first three minutes of the battle you cannot claim an objective this has helped factions like nurgle and in the future factions like dwarves which are relatively slow and they need to be able to make it to the objectives to pin up a bit of a fight in an attempt to hold them where possible we are going to start the game now as i believe my opponent is ready and i will talk through reinforcement points as we delve into this so you can see my opponent, he will deploy his entire army on the far side, and we can move forward to a nice dominant situation in the centre. You're going to see a lot of fights being taken around the centre objective, and one person holding one flank and the other one holding the left. That's where your light cavalry and fast mobile units can be used to harass your opponent's home objective and try to shut it down as much as possible. Now, you're looking at my army, it's not very big, so how do we counteract that and bring in the reinforcements? There is always lovely reinforcement points at the back. You click on them, and a little menu will appear. These guys all do cost resources though. Your resources can be seen at the top. It is called supplies. You get 16 supplies per second. Now if you do damage to the enemy, you'll also gain supplies. And if you're losing, there's a comeback bonus and you can actually gain supplies from that, making the battles closer and closer. It's not too crazy though. If you get pet really on the back foot, it certainly can be a massive struggle nonetheless. As we get more supplies, more of our units can be unlocked, and boop, we can bring a unit forth into the world, and it is summoned onto the battlefield and can indeed be moved forward. So let's move that one over to the left-hand side to try to claim that objective. Units with Vanguard deploy can be used at these Vanguard reinforcement points, meaning they can get to the battlefield that little bit quicker. It's not a huge distance, but trust me, it certainly adds up, and that's only for units who do indeed have Vanguard. We're going to pull back here just a little bit so we can have a bit more time to talk now because capturing objective points, there's actually quite a bit to it. So a unit will have to be on an objective for quite some time before that objective is theirs. What happens, for example, if I have a unit of Chaos Warriors with some Nurglings in there? Well, my Chaos Warriors have a 100 models in their unit. My opponent's Nurglings only have 60. So if I'm on that objective and they're on that objective, I'm simply going to start capturing it. Now, I won't capture it super fast because there's not that much of a difference. If I have a 100 troops on this objective and my opponent has none, I'm certainly going to be able to get way more uh, of the objective far quicker than I normally would. It's good to note flying units cannot capture objectives in any way whatsoever. They cannot contest them and they cannot capture them. That is mainly a balancing reason to ensure they can't actually you know, flow around the enemy deployment zone the entire day and just capture objectives. Let's pop in at some more reinforcements now. And you can see we've got a decent amount of money, so we can bring in some more elite troops. I certainly love bringing elite troops into the battlefield to hold central objectives. They can do some really disgusting damage. As far as capturing objectives goes, not only can flyers not capture objectives, but single entities and cavalry will capture objectives slower than infantry. Infantry is by far and away the best way to capture an actual strategic location. They're still locked at the moment though on 20 seconds, but soon I can show you guys how that does indeed operate. Up at the top of the screen here, we do have the victory points. So our victory condition is to get 5,000 victory tickets. The way this works, if you hold an objective every five seconds, or 10 seconds on every second i believe after watch as we pop in i believe every second you gain five points and if you have two objectives you will be gaining 10 points if you have three objectives you will of course be gaining a big fat whopping 15 points which means these games can go relatively swift they're certainly a lot longer than the original pitch battle mode but they uh, can still go quick if you do start to dominate in one way or another in the distance, you can see my opponent has claimed this objective. It is now controlled by Nurgle, and that means he is getting those plus five tickets. So you can see at the top, the middle is soon to be my opponent's as well. On the left-hand side, we are starting to take it back. There is a decent amount of troops in here for us. My opponent is in here with some forces, but we have more than he does. So you can see that little green icon being pushed up means we are the ones starting to capture it, and it shall soon be ours. Now, normally I wouldn't recommend pinning your whole army on one objective like this. You definitely should be contesting the middle, but we're just 
just showcase in the actual fight today. Let's bring in some more elite troops in the form of the Minotaurs and try to get them in on the action as well. The best thing I found about this game mode in general is every single unit has a really good purpose. You want to hold an objective, you bring in your elite infantry. You want to harass the enemy back line, you bring in some flyers. You want to harass the enemy back point, you bring in skirmish cavalry. Single entities also certainly have a place, but no one single uh, in, like unit type seems to dominate the battlefield at all. So I'm going to continue this battle, guys, now. This was a nice, brief little lookout at the domination game mode in general. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It was it's going to be so much fun bringing you guys all this content into the future. There are some crazy, crazy strategies and plans you can do with this in general. But let me delve into that with future videos. Coming in with a lot of battle reports in the future. In fact, we're going to be delving into some battle reports probably tomorrow after this is released. I'm going to be streaming or dropping a video every single day based on Total War Warhammer 3. But hopefully you've got the basics nice and simple to remember. Three objectives. First to 5,000 points wins. And you can bring in reinforcements from the back here. You don't have to spam them either. You can save up points and go for some nice elite troops, or you can try and swarm your opponent with a load of cheap and cheerful chaff. The world is absolutely yours. You can do almost whatever you desire. Whatever the blood god calls for you, you shall answer. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe for more Total War Warhammer content into the future. If you enjoyed this tutorial and would like to see more tutorials on this game mode or multiplayer in general, feel free to let me know down below. Let's drop one of our little faction abilities here. Go down and corn. Oh, that juicy extra 24 meter tech is very nice. But yeah, like, subscribe, comment, all that standard stuff. Load of links down below in the description. And until next time, guys, as always, peace, peace, and stay awesome.